What up? I'm Adrian, this is Rabona TV, and hey, football's been pretty dead lately. Well, not dead dead, but the equivalent to that time between Christmas and New Year's Eve where you're sort of dead to the world and there's events happening, some are all right, most of them suck, but you don't know what day it is or anything like that. That's where we're at in early January, you know? Knock off some of those ratty matches to get to the goods later on. Oh yeah, and some of you may be wondering, where's that live show? I'm working on it. I don't want it to be total shit the first time, maybe just like normal shit. So I'm working on it, okay? It's coming. So with that said, let's talk some Carabao Cup semifinals first leg action and maybe throw some Copa del Rey in there, you know. Since we mentioned the Copa del Rey, let's start there. So Tuesday, my birthday, saw two heavy hitters trying to stake their claim in the quarterfinals. The first match, Atletico Madrid, saw their newfound attacking bounty, putting on yet another great display, namely from the two new boys, Vitolo and Diego Costa. By the way, how annoying was that second yellow for Diego on the weekend? I mean, you're back at the club that you love and then you just go and celebrate a goal and you get a second yellow card? Come on, man! Anyways, in this second leg against Leda, after which he had scored in the first leg, Diego took his goal involvement to three goals in three matches, by way of assisting Yannick Carrasco's 57th minute opener. This match was also Vitolo's first start for Atletico, after making the switch from Sevilla, and he marked the occasion with a debut goal. It's the season of debuts, no? It took Vitolo four matches to score his first for Sevilla, so it's safe to say he's off to a great start. Speaking of great starts, in the other match, Valencia vs Las Palmas, Luciano Vieto scored with his first shot on target for Valencia in all competitions. In fact, he scored with all three of his first shots on target for Valencia as he begged a hat trick. And just jumping back to Atletico Madrid, no I don't watch every single one of their matches, but if they were to lose Griezmann either in this window, which looks unlikely, or in the next window, which looks far more likely, I think that they would be just fine. With the likes of Carrasco, Diego Costa, Vitolo, and if you're Jimmy Conrad, you may add Gamero in there as well, plus the support of Coque, Seul Niguez, etc. I think Atletico would be fine without Griezmann, if he is to move on in 2018. He's definitely not flying as high as he was in the last two seasons with only 8 goals and 6 assists in all competitions. Not the worst numbers by any means, but that's not taking into account the intangibles that he brings to the team like drawing attention of defenders and demanding the opposition's attention. But I do think that his stock, compared to where it was in 2016 and early 2017, has dropped a bit, and he's definitely less vital to Atletico's future than he was in the past, which begs the question, should United make him their top priority? Well, I mean, for all of the reasons I mentioned before, you'd maybe think not, but picturing him in the United attack playing with the likes of Pogba, Martial, Lukaku, when he's good, and either a Rashford or Mkhitaryan, he'd still add a ton of quality to that team. Alright, the other side of Madrid also made it through to the quarterfinals as they took care of business against Segunda División side Numancia. Or at least, Lucas Vazquez took care of business as he scored his first ever brace for Real Madrid after just... 109 matches. He's also scored 4 goals for Madrid this season, which is the same amount as his last two seasons combined. Wow. He wasn't the only one to score a brace though, as Numancia striker Guillermo notched twice and man, did I ever like seeing that. The way he celebrated that second goal as if they had won the match, when in reality it was still just 5-2 on aggregate, I love it. I love seeing that and I don't blame them man. You play for a second division club and you score a brace in the Bernabeu, I'd be celebrating like that as well, even if we were losing 20-2 on aggregate. Okay, let's talk Carabao Cup, baby, because Man City had a bit of a scare in their first leg at home against Bristol City, the boys who bounced United from the cup. Pep admitted that they are a little light in striking options now that Gabriel Jesus is out for a bit, and he had rested Sergio Aguero in this one. Bristol took their goal tally in this competition to 17 when Bobby Reid converted, the most scored by any club, with 12 of them coming against Premier League opposition. But 10 minutes after the half, Kevin De Bruyne took his goal involvement in the League Cup to 9, with 6 goals scored and 3 assists in just 8 appearances. And it goes without saying, that's over a few seasons. So Bristol did get what could be an important away goal against City going into the second leg, but I mean, I just can't see Guardiola's team letting this one slip away on them. I mean, trust me, I would love to see Bristol go to the final and win the damn thing, but can they keep City off the score sheet? I feel like that away goal will be neutralized real quick. But anyways, Guardiola did, as mentioned earlier, say that City are light in striking options, so you gotta wonder who they have been keeping their eye on lately. I mean, the obvious choice is Alexis, that seems like a matter of 
when rather than a matter of will he come. Especially if you go off of what KDB said regarding the Chilean. Speaking of the Chilean though, his team managed a nil-nil draw with Chelsea at Stamford Bridge in what was a chippy but not overly exciting match. It was pretty vanilla. This was actually the fourth draw between Chelsea and Arsenal this season, so Arson has Conte's number or Conte has Arson's number or Anyway, if you're an Arsenal fan, you're happy with the result as you got a draw away and bring the tie home just needing to win. If you're a Chelsea fan, you're happy knowing that Arsenal didn't get an away goal and all you'll need in the return leg is a scored draw and you're through. One thing you won't be happy to hear if you're an Arsenal fan though, that no other club has been eliminated from the League Cup at the semi-final stage more than Arsenal at seven times. Damn. But anyway, that will just about do it for this video. Again, it's sort of a weird time in the football world, but it's looking like things will be back to normal this weekend. So that means things will be back to normal on here. Keep your eyes peeled for a live transfer special in the near future. Subscribe if you're new around here and I'll see you later. Ciao.